Welcome to episode 190 of the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. I'm Kim Newlove, the host. Imagine this. You're a pharmacist and you wrote a book. It's published and now you want to reach a broader audience by publishing the audiobook version. You don't want someone else to narrate it. You want to narrate it, but you don't know how to do it. So you Google, how do I narrate my audiobook? Half a dozen ads pop up, probably for online courses that think they can teach you how to do it or try to sell you equipment they think you need. And the other search results make it sound easy. They say, narrate your audiobook in five easy steps. And the next thing you know, you're watching YouTube videos and shopping for microphones on Amazon.com. About an hour into your research, you realize that there's a lot more to it than you originally thought. That is a normal thought. In fact, the amount of information is overwhelming. You don't know what to believe or who to trust, and you're starting to wonder how anyone narrates their own audiobook. Let me help. Again, my name is Kim Newlove. I am a pharmacist, voice actor, and podcast host. Among other things, I narrate audiobooks for women pharmacist authors. In this episode, I'll share five resources that will get you pointed in the right direction on your audiobook journey so that you don't feel overwhelmed by online search results. All five resources are in the show notes, which you can find at thepharmacistvoice.com. Just click on the podcast tab and search for episode 190. I'll list all five resources first, then I'll tell you a few things that you'll learn from each resource. Let's dive in. Number one, narratorsroadmap.com. Number two, acx.com. Number three, it's a Facebook group with a really long title. We'll get to it in just a minute. Number four, episode 83 of this podcast, the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. It's my interview with Sean Pratt. He's an audiobook narrator and coach. And finally, number five, consultants. And I will name names in just a little bit. Now, let's talk about each of these resources one at a time. First is the Narrator's Roadmap website, which you can find at narratorsroadmap.com. This website is curated beautifully by audiobook narrator Karen Cummins. I'm mentioning this website first among the five resources in this podcast episode because I think that you should check it out first. It is amazing. It's a valuable resource for audiobook narrators and authors. There's some free content on this website, but some of the content is for members only. What does that mean? You have to pay for it. Membership is $7 per month or $35 for six months or $70 for a year. Now, here's a disclaimer. I do not run this website, and I am not compensated for sharing this information. Narrator's Roadmap, where do you start? I recommend you start with the Knowledge Base tab. Knowledge Base. When you click on it, I recommend you go to Now That You're Here, Where Do You Start? It's literally a line in there. Click on Now That You're Here, Where Do You Start? Now, if you don't want to start there, that's fine. If you just want to find out what's in it for me as an author, I get it. Check out the author resources. Author resources. Where do you find the author resources link? It is in the Welcome Center. There are two things that you'll probably like that are in the, this part of the website. One is a blog article by Karen Cummins featuring audiobook resources for authors. And the second thing is the audiobook distributor comparison chart. One thing that pharmacist authors ask me all the time is, which distributor should I use? I get it. It's a great question. But I can't answer that for you. That's a very personal choice. But I must say, Karen's chart can help. So check out the audiobook distributor comparison chart, and also, of course, check out that blog article. Also, you should check out the sections to record on the Narrator's Roadmap website. In sections to record, it's literally that. You'll learn which sections of your book need to be narrated. For example, I've had these questions, which sections do I narrate? For example, the table of contents is not narrated. The index is not narrated. The author's bio is not narrated. If you have a glossary in your book, 
that's not typically narrated either. For more tips about which sections to record, visit narratorsroadmap.com. That content, by the way, is free, and it's in the Knowledge Base section. Building off of my last comment about sections to record, I must say that knowing which sections need to be recorded will help you create something for yourself. You need a chronological checklist of what you need to record. Now, what does that look like? It can be anything you want, but what I like to do is take a piece of notebook paper and line it from top to bottom, 1 through 20, and just write each chapter that needs to be recorded in order from top to bottom. Uh, Let's use a real-life example. My last audiobook that I narrated opened with the credits, so that was line one, opening credits, and then was the author note on line two, followed by the introduction. Then I had chapters one through 12, so I literally put chapter one, chapter two, and so on. Then the last chapter was the closing credits. This was a short book, about six hours in runtime. It doesn't matter if you are narrating a short book or a long book, the same concept applies. It sounds simple because it is. We are pharmacists, we love structure, and creating that structure for yourself with a simple checklist will give you peace of mind. In summary, Narrator's Roadmap is a great resource for audiobook narrators and authors. Let's move on to the second resource, which is ACX.com. That's A-C-X.com. ACX stands for Audiobook Creation Exchange. Audiobook Creation Exchange. Now, if you publish your book through ACX, it will be sold through three online retailers, Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. I have narrated audiobooks through ACX, The website is easy to navigate, and both narrators and authors use this website. Once you go to acx.com, what should you click on? Great question. I would go to the How It Works tab, then go to Authors as Narrators, and then watch the six-minute YouTube video, What is in this video? It's about narrating your own book. It includes reasons to narrate your book and best practices when narrating, like what to wear, you know, like so your clothes don't, you don't hear your clothes scratching around, um, and you're not wearing jewelry, and they also talk about what to do with your hands so that your hand gestures don't get recorded into the audio. They talk about where to put your manuscript and much more. Check out that six-minute YouTube video. There are also audio production resources on the website. That's exactly what you're going to click on, audio production resources. One of them is extremely important, so I'll take just a minute to explain it. The audio submission requirements are extremely important, and they're in the audio production resources on acx.com. These are what I call the audiobook specs or specifications. Again, the specs are extremely important. For example, you need to submit all mono or all stereo files. The RMS needs to be between negative 23 and negative 18 decibels. Your peak audio level should not exceed negative 3 decibels, and the noise floor max is negative 60. What kind of files do you need to submit? Great question. You need to submit constant bitrate MP3 files at 44.1 kHz and 192 kbps or higher. Naming the files correctly is also important. In summary, this is just a sample of the specs. There is more on the list, and if you want to see them all, they are written out on acx.com. Just go to acx.com. Note that recording an audiobook is way more complicated than just opening up your laptop, firing up GarageBand, and pressing record, and then sending that raw audio to ACX. If you do not meet specifications, your files will fail ACX quality control. And how will that affect you? ACX won't publish your audiobook. And worst case scenario, you'll have to redo the parts of your audiobook that did not pass quality control. Listen, if you don't know how to meet specifications, it's entirely in the realm of possibility that your entire audiobook will fail and have to be redone. And trust me, you'll have to come up with a better plan the second time. I know that this is real talk and it may seem unkind, 
I get it. But it's important for me to share this with you so that you can set your expectations and you can plan to hire an engineer who is experienced at recording, editing, and producing audiobooks and meeting ACX specs. Audio engineering is not something that most people know how to do, and it is hard to learn. I've been recording, editing, and producing audio projects for years now, and I record my own audiobooks. I do not go to studios, and engineers do not put my files together for me. I do, however, hire an editor, her name is Julie, and she reviews my work for me before I submit it. As a team, we pass ACX specs. I want to give you a common sense tip about working with audio engineers. Do not pay your engineer until you're satisfied with the files and they meet ACX specs. Negotiate all that right up front. Moving on. One last thing about ACX.com. There's a section for authors that you might like. It's about promoting your audiobook. What's in this section? It mentions YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, blogs, podcasts, emails, and more. Now, if you need help promoting your book, you should check out that section. In summary, ACX.com is a good resource for authors narrating their own audiobooks. It's also the website that you'll use if you want to distribute your audiobook through Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. Let's move on to the third resource, which is that Facebook group with a really long name. The full title is Indie parentheses, ACX and others, and parentheses, audiobook narrators and producers Facebook group. Got that? <laughs> it's a long one. Indie, ACX and others, audiobook narrators and producers Facebook group. There's a link to it in the show notes. Why would a pharmacist author narrating their own audiobook want to use this resource? That's a great question. This Facebook group is a place for people to discuss all things related to narrating and producing audiobooks on ACX, Findaway, Authors Republic, Spoken Realms, and other platforms. To join this group, you need to be approved. Like most Facebook groups, right? The directions say that you must have an ACX profile to join the group because they check. I am part of this group. I don't know if they ever checked my profile, but I definitely have an ACX profile. I have an ACX narrator's profile. Now, as an author, you can have an ACX.com account, so definitely create one, but just make sure that you identify yourself as an author. You can probably tell by the way I'm talking that authors kind of have their side of ACX.com and then narrators have their own side that they sign up for. Authors sign up for author accounts, narrators sign up for narrator accounts. How many people are in this group? A lot. There are more than 9,500 members as I record this in December of 2022. That's a lot of narrators. And collectively, they know just about everything there is to know about narrating audiobooks. So why would an author want to be connected to them? I would recommend it because they know the best practices for narrating audiobooks. If you're serious about using ACX to publish your audiobook and you want access to the hive mind, as we call it, of thousands of audiobook narrators, join this group. And by the way, I highly recommend that if you join this group, search for answers before asking questions. I think that's a best practice for any Facebook group, but I just want to mention that. There's no need to have different people asking the same question multiple times. Use the little magnifying glass that is the search tool and look up the question that you have in mind before you ask. Chances are somebody's already asked. In summary, this Facebook group could be of value to you as an author narrating your own audiobook. It's actually one of the first things that I did when I was training to narrate audiobooks. I started back in 2019. And speaking of training to narrate audiobooks, Let's move on to the fourth resource, which has to do with my training. The fourth resource is the Pharmacist Voice Podcast, Episode 83, my interview with Sean Pratt, audiobook narrator and coach. From July of 2019 until about uh, September of 2020, Sean Pratt was my nonfiction audiobook narration coach. 
I worked with him once a month, and I learned the ins and outs of nonfiction audiobook narration and the biz of the audiobook narration biz. I learned a lot. He's a great teacher. Now, after I graduated from his program in September of 2020, I invited him to be on my podcast. He was on my podcast in February of 2021. Like I said a minute ago, it's episode 83, and I put a link to it in the show notes. During our conversation, Sean gives tips for pharmacist authors who want to narrate their own audiobooks. I'll give you the Cliff Notes version of our conversation right now, but you'll get a lot more out of the episode if you just listen to it. Six things, here we go. Number one, build your stamina. Read out loud for increasingly longer periods of time. Build your stamina. Number two, get coaching with Sean Pratt or someone else. Number three, work with an audio engineer and a director in a studio to get the highest quality audio possible. I think that really backs up what I said a little bit earlier about meeting ACX specs. Number four, remember, your audiobook can affect your career in the long run. Number five, this could be your gateway to something else. And number six, do the gap exercise to learn how your narrating voice sounds compared to your casual conversational voice. I know that those highlights may sound cryptic if you have not heard the entire conversation. I get it. So my advice is listen to the episode. Sean Pratt knows what he's talking about. And you'll be glad you listened to our conversation. Sean has narrated more than a thousand audiobooks, and he's coached hundreds of nonfiction audiobook narrators, including me. He is a great teacher. Highly recommend this episode. The fifth and final resource I would recommend to pharmacist authors is consultants. If you need help narrating your audiobook, get a coach. For nonfiction material, I just talked about him, I would recommend Sean Pratt. Again, check out our conversation in episode 83 to hear what kind of a coach and teacher he is. He has narrated more than a thousand audiobooks, and he's highly respected in the audiobook industry. You should check him out if you need to narrate a nonfiction audiobook and you need a coach. Sean's website is in the show notes. There are a lot of audiobook narration coaches out there, and the Narrator's Roadmap website actually has a button you can click. It's called the Audiobook Village, and I believe it's a members-only section. You do have to pay to access it, but there are audiobook narration coaches in the Audiobook Village section of Narrator's Roadmap, so check that out too. The next consultant I would recommend is Jeffrey Kafer. Let's take a walk down memory lane real quick. The first audiobook narration coach that I ever consulted with was Jeffrey Kafer. He sent me to Sean Pratt, the nonfiction audiobook narration coach, because Jeffrey knew that I wanted to do nonfiction audiobook narration and e-learning, and Jeffrey doesn't teach nonfiction. So sending me to Sean was the right choice for me, and I appreciate Jeffrey making that suggestion. You are welcome to reach out to Jeffrey as well, but I'm not sure if he's available right now for consulting. I haven't worked with him in years, probably three years or more, uh, but basically I paid for an hour of his time and I told him what I wanted to do and he pointed me in the right direction. Maybe you could do the same. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Jeffrey's website is in the show notes. I believe it is audiobookmentor.com. Again, I'll put that in the show notes. Last but not least, I will throw my name into the mix as a consultant. If you need to talk to a pharmacist who knows how to narrate audiobooks, I can help. I have narrated audiobooks for pharmacist authors, and I have consulted with several pharmacist authors about them narrating their own audiobooks. This is not my first rodeo, but it's up to you if you want to hire me. I do not give this information out for free. If you're interested, Contact me through my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. Just click on the contact tab, type out a message, and let's get started. I can walk with you on your audiobook journey. My rates for the service are in the show notes. In summary, consultants are a good resource for pharmacist authors who want to narrate their own audiobook. 
even if you just talk to somebody about how does this work? What do you recommend? You know, just even for an hour, do yourself a favor and consider hiring a consultant. Professional narrators like me and Sean Pratt have been there and done that more than once, and we can help you through the process of performing your audiobook. It's more than reading. It is a performance. Now let's wrap this up. The five resources that I recommend for pharmacist authors who want to narrate their audiobook are, number one, narratorsroadmap.com. Number two, acx.com. Number three, that really long Facebook group name, the Indie ACX and Others Audiobook Narrators and Producers Facebook group. Number four, the Pharmacist's Voice podcast, episode 83 with Sean Pratt. And number five, consultants such as Sean Pratt, Jeffrey Kafer, the ones on the Narrator's Roadmap Audiobook Village, and myself. Why am I sharing these resources today? Because you're busy. You're a pharmacist. You wrote a book. You want to narrate it, but you're overwhelmed by the amount of information online. Check out the resources I mentioned. They are a great starting point. And if you need someone to walk with you on your journey, contact me through my website. I can help. Thank you for listening to episode 190 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to read the show notes. What's in the show notes today? You'll find a link to Narrator's Roadmap, ACX, the Audiobook Narrator's Facebook group, the Pharmacist Voice podcast, episode 83 with Sean Pratt, a few audiobook narration coaches, my social media links, and more. If you know someone who would like this episode or needs to hear it, please share it with them. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. Thanks again for listening. I'll talk to you next week.